We touched base with you uh, when some of these executives went to the Hill a couple of months ago. We've talked about your white paper, and now we've got the Times. And a lot of viewers might be uh, wondering whether or not the information the Times uncovered could have any direct impact on the trajectory of legislation. What do you say? Well, I have to tell you, I was disappointed with the management of Facebook, who were slow to acknowledge the Russian intervention in, in 2016. Then when they reappeared before our committee, uh, they said, hey, uh, we got it. We understand how important this is. We want to work with you. Yet at the very time they were making those promises in public before the committee, they'd hired a political hit team to basically go out and try to undermine the committee's credibility. And, and I guess the, the good news is they tried to do that in a bipartisan fashion. They tried to take, take on both the Republicans and Democrats. Um, but I'm not sure that's necessarily all a, a check in the right direction. So I think that what Facebook is going to have to do, you know, I've laid out a series of ideas from data portability to more questions around user authentication to new competitive tools. For example, if we knew how much data Facebook or Google was collecting on each of us and how valuable that was, pricing transparency, data transparency, I think there are ways we can find common ground, but they've got to come to the table. So far what they've, they've said is, yeah, yeah, we want to work with you, but when we get the specifics, um, there's not been a lot of give on their side. And listen, I don't want to kneecap these companies. They're great American innovation companies. I don't want them to have right. them replaced by Alibaba, or Badu, or Tencent. But the notion that the wild, wild west days of no regulations at all, no guardrails, just can no longer exist. They are going to, Senator, they ought to work with us, though, to get the appropriate guardrails. Senator, sure. what has this report and the other information you've gotten in recent days changed in your calculus about working with these companies? Is, is it uh, informing your understanding of their commitment to focus on getting this done versus protecting their own reputations? What's the real difference here? Well, one of the things, when you, when, whether it's Facebook or Google, when they lay out these broad mantras that they want to do no evil or only connect the world, they set themselves up, frankly, on a higher standard than most other businesses. So then when you see them basically go out and hire a political hit team to try to undermine the committee that's tried to work with them, yeah, that, that leaves a sour taste. Um, but, you know, we're all adults. Uh, politics and policy is tough business. You know, what, what I want to see from Facebook now is a real willingness to engage on substantive policy areas. I've laid out 20 separate ideas. They don't fall Democrat, Republican. They fall future past. There's a lot of interest from a lot of colleagues. Um, and frankly, we're trying to educate many of our colleagues because candidly, a lot of them don't even understand how social media works. But the more they're willing to come to the table in a substantive discussion, um, these recent blips can be put behind us. But if they continue to basically stonewall and say, oh, yes, we're for some level of guardrails, but don't really engage, then I think you're going to see um, Congress act perhaps precipitously. And if we don't have their engagement, chances are we'll get it wrong. So, Senator Warner, let's talk the details of some of those regulations you'd like to see put in place, those guardrails, so to speak. Do you think you can actually get them through Congress? Well, they've indicated uh, that there was a lot of interest. Let me, let me talk about a couple that I've seen broad-based interest in. You know, should we have a right to know when we're being communicated with on a social media platform, whether the person or entity posting that message to us is a real human being versus a computer or a bot? There's nothing inherently wrong with automated messages, but at least having that knowledge might make us better discerners of the information we're receiving since it appears that particularly on the political commentary side, a lot of the activity is generated by foreign bots. Should we be able to know if somebody says they're, they're posting out of New York, but the post is actually originating in St. Petersburg, that there would be a geo indicator indicating that, hey, this is not originating uh, where the user says it is. And then you ultimately get to identity validation. There's one bucket there. There's a bucket of issues around privacy and frankly the fact that the Europeans have taken the lead on this when generally America takes the lead on technology policy I think has been a mistake. And then there are these series of areas around data portability, data transparency, and pricing transparency that actually might encourage more competition in the marketplace if, uh, frankly, if Americans realized that these services are not free but they are taking enormous amounts of our personal data and selling it to advertisers. You know, I'm wide open for a market-based solution, 
but we can't have that market-based solution if we don't have more data and pricing transparency.